My name is Sophie de Sousa and I am a stained glass artist living in West London and this is my YouTube channel. Welcome. I'm going to do all sorts of tutorials on all sorts of things you want to know about stained glass and maybe some you don't um, and there'll be a lot of just filming me working. So um, I hope you enjoy it and find it useful and if you have any specific questions or things you'd like to see please let me know. So I thought I'd give you a little workshop tour. This is how I work. It's very messy, but this is the real McCoy, okay? So um, this is my workbench, and these are my glass racks. And as you can see, I have them arranged through size and color, and they go all the way around my workbench. And I've got some more over there. Um, and you really need a way of storing your glass so you can find things. Um, these are my lead boxes, so 12 flat, 6, that would always be round. What's the difference between round and flat? Um, well, round keeps the shape a little better, um, but it's, it's harder to manipulate. So you use flat, and flat means the profile here. This is a flat, I suppose, to having a bit of a, a roundness to it, which this has. Oop. So, 12 flat, uh, which is mostly what you put on the outside edges of windows. 10 round, 12 round. So, there is 12 round, not so flat. Uh, this is Y profile, which you don't often need, to be honest. And I bought a whole box, and I'll probably never use it. What, 20, y profile. Y profile means it's not an H, it's a Y. And Wait, what I I can't find it. Okay. Yep. Um, and I bought this because a lot of the windows I make go into double glazed units. And the idea is you can put a spacer bar inside the double glazed units on either side of this single um, protrusion. And it will hold your stained glass in the middle of the double glazed unit. Now that works on small windows, but the windows I make, because they're for churches, they tend to be like four meters long. And the, the glazers that put them in the double glazed units for me find it too difficult. So what they do is they lay my glass against the double glazed unit, then they put spaces behind it, and then they put the final uh, piece of glass in the double glazed unit on. It's not supposedly as good as having it floating in the middle of a double glazed unit, but it just doesn't seem possible over the sort of lengths I do it to get uh, the window stable enough. So down at the bottom here, I've got the really big lead that I use for church windows that are up in the gods, because when this, I've got, this is 20 mil, I've got 22 and 24 mil, and that's the width. Um, when that's up in the gods, that really doesn't look very big. Um, so I use this a lot. So these are my boxes of lead. This is my miscellaneous leftover. It's my lovely uh, polisher. Hmm. This is the resist I use when I do sandblasting. My What's a resist? A resist, it's like sticky back plastic and you cut your design into it either by hand or using a plotter cutter and then apply it to the glass peel off the areas you want to sandblast and the rest of the glass is protected. These are my little drawers. Um, so I've got these are nails and screws and things that I use for making my jigs. These are my offcuts of lead. I always keep all offcuts of lead because you can sell it for scrap. Lead's expensive, and maybe once every couple of years, all these things will add up to a meal out. Um, don't bring them to the restaurant, no. <laughs> I don't think it's legal tender. Um, also, when I take apart an old window to restore it, which I do from time to time, I keep all that lead because I can sell that too. These are my felts. I've, I label most of my things. These are my knives. Toothbrushes. When I want a fresh mouth. No, not <laughs> when you really. Stay you can over. imagine what I use those for. No, I can't. Okay, what do you well, use them for? Just 
cleaning little cleaning things little bit, or sometimes bit. I use them for getting paint effects with my paint and sometimes I use them for polishing up bits of lead where I don't I need to put an extra bit of black on I call it black it's black great polish it's a bit like black toothpaste and sometimes if you put it onto the lead and then you get it on the glass and then you clean it off the glass you've cleaned it off the lead as well and you can just go on forever and it's really annoying so a small implement is good um, two brushes uh, this is my and I really need to do something with this this is my off cuts of solder so you're working with a piece of solder that's essentially this long that's how it starts and then as you use it it shrinks and when it gets to about this size it gets too hot to hold so you start a new piece now what people do is they they start to put them together on their workbench and just touch them with the soldering iron and you get nice long lengths and you can use it I just never get around to doing it if you're I had trying to get the world record longest yeah. off cut solder see if I had an assistant I'd make them do that <laughs> um, let me show you these Th this is little bits of wire and when you do a big window you sometimes have to tie the window to a saddle bar Problem. actually let me show you there we are from Reading stained glass copper wire and tinned copper wire tinned means it's it's been coated um, so it doesn't look copper anymore uh, you have to get the sort of wire that you can solder. Um, so stainless steel would be no good. You can't solder stainless steel. I'm not even sure if you can solder steel. Um, so yes, you. Uh, I'll do a. I'll, I'll make a video when I'm using these because you have to solder them to the lead. Um, so what else can I show you? Uh, more glass racks. Oh, here, 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 glass racks. These, this is my uh, glass bin. Obviously, you keep a separate bin for glass and for everything else. So, you know, either things that broke or off cuts. Ah, oh, there's a whole fish in I there. I know, it's so sad, isn't it? This broke in the kiln. It, it just had its first firing. Yeah, very sad. Can't I'll talk. You a... Cut round the fish. And then put it in <laughs> I your suppose glass. I could. Yeah, I never thought of that. But um, look, the the, um, the beautiful second attempt or third. How many? What that one over there? How many did it take oh, till it didn't God, break three, in the kiln? Three. It was awful. It's so you gorgeous. have to. I started after like the second time. I started firing the glass with no paint on it to check there was nothing in the structure of the glass that was going to blow when it was in the kiln. And also I did a really, really slow firing because um, the bigger the sheet of glass, the slower you need to, especially lower the temperature. But you, I just go slow up and slow down and resting it halfway down as well. But I'll talk about firings in more detail another time. Old patterns, don't know why I keep them. Cartoons that I draw from. This is a roll of um, tracing paper, very useful. Um, these are my other drawers. I've got tools here, which is general grozers, oyster knife. These are any tools to do with cutting, so it's lead cutters, lead cutters, scissors, pens, more pens. Do any of them work? Yeah, every now and again I go through them. <laughs> uh, this is sort of miscellaneous, like fuses. This is solder more for electrics, which I do do sometimes. Calculators, adhesive, plasters, you need somewhere to keep your plasters. More plasters. Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, it was some weird thing I experimented with. No days glaze. And evolution in the art of stained glass. Well, it doesn't work, so forget that. Um, stirrers. When you're mixing up your cement, you've got a load of plastic spoons, scrapers, knives, useful things. Gloves, because you need gloves sometimes when you're working. Tape. I quite often will tape things up to the window to see what they look like from a distance. 
uh, just general art stuff. I got this tape to use as a resist for sandblasting that worked quite nicely. Um, yeah. Oh, that's mosaic stuff. Occasionally I do mosaic work in schools. More art stuff. This is this is cloths. So you always need scrubbers and sponges and cloths for cleaning up your glass. Um, brushes, never have enough of them. And this is where I keep my soldering irons. I've got about three. Um, straight edges and squares. Always useful, always needed. Um, this is my, oh, this is where I, I keep some of my paperwork. So these are the next designs I'm going to be working on. And I will show you that. Um, my light box, which you've seen. This is my paint station. Um, and I put it on wheels because um, if I'm painting for, you know, three days in a row. Because I'm right-handed, it's more convenient to have my paint station on the far side, on the right side. I'm gonna come round. Okay. So if I'm painting for days on end, I want my paint station on the right-hand side, because it's just easier. Um, and you might think, well, why didn't I set my workshop up the other way around? And there is a reason for that. And I will take this opportunity to introduce you to my homemade sandblast. Whoa, wait, this is homemade? Well, this is an old um, cabinet from an office, you know, stationary cabinet. It's metal. Um, it's got shell, a shelf in it that I can move up and down. You should come, come in and have a look. So, you can see the red the red tube that's where the um, the air and the sand come through and I've got a little shelf and I put my arms in here to long rubber gloves and then if you just film over here Frida this is a, uh, a, a, a sort of industrial hoover and it sucks the excess air out because if you blast a load of air into a closed cabinet you have to have somewhere for the air to go, otherwise the cabinet will just get full of pressurised air. So this sucks the air out. Um, and this has got a, ver a very powerful filter in it so that it can accommodate the very fine sand which inevitably goes in there a little bit as well. Um, so this, like this was about £500 this, but you need this because it, it filters the sand out of the air, otherwise the sandy air would find a way out and you'd be breathing it in. So you should also wear a mask when you use a sandblaster. You should do a tutorial on how to Yeah, I will, I'm gonna do that. I had no idea this, you made that. Yeah, you see, you can buy them. What you need for a sandblaster is a compressor, and I'll show you that in a minute, that has a big tank and pressurizes the air, and it then sends the air down these tubes to whatever tool you decide to attach to it. Um, now, for my purposes, it's attached to um, a pressure pot of sand and it mixes and you adjust these till you get the mix you want, um, the air with the sand and then sends it to here. And I have a, uh, this is a foot pedal for Which way, sorry? this, it's tucked out of the way but when I work I put it in front of the sand blaster and it's a foot pedal to control the on-off. Um, these bits of foam are always useful for um, for very delicate bits of glass that you're transporting. Um, then I've got more miscellaneous tools. And, oh, Beth, come this way. Which way? Okay, well, no, you can film it from there, actually. So, these are my storage for my uh, glass palettes painting palettes. So it's expensive, you want to keep it, not waste it. But there are many different ones and this helps remember what I'm using. So this one says black water no gum. Remove that. Black water no gum. So I know that this 
Here's a bit of black paint mixed with water with no gum arabic in it. And then the next one says brown oil. So I know that this is umber brown mixed with oil. And it goes on like that. You can see. So I've got two of those and it's still not enough. There are so many configurations of paint I mix up. Um, now, if we go around here, I've got my sample box, which is so useful for um, taking to clients so they can pick the colours they like, but also uh, when I'm choosing colours for my next project. Could hold them up, see what, what's what. This box was made up at Reading Stained Glass and it's what they sell. You can also buy um, uh, sample boxes from each of the manufacturers, but whether or not you can get each of the samples is questionable because nobody stocks them all. So I much prefer this where you get what's in stock at a particular shop, much more sensible. Um, Various tools and Tupperware boxes, frames. These are my these are my frit supplies. So occasionally I do jobs, use jobs. Uh, I just love having them all accessible. This is tiny kiln. Uh, these are oh that looks like it's rubbish. Oops. Uh, dust sheets and things. Any spare cloth I, I keep. Fancy dress. Yes, <laughs> if you like. This is my compressor and it's a bit of a beast um, because sometimes I might do a big uh, sandblaster job and if I want to sandblast continually for hours, a smaller tank would run out of air. So I would have to keep stopping to let the tank refill with air. Hence, I bought a really massive one. Um, what kind but, of price? Uh, it's about £2,000. But if you buy a small one, it's completely adequate and much cheaper, so long as you don't want to continually sandblast for hours. Say you only want to do an hour of sandblasting, a smaller tank would probably be fine. So did you have a really big job? That you... I did. I had to do a confessional door um, because there are safeguarding guidelines now which say you must be able to see into the confessional. But they don't want it just to be glass because it's a bit exposing. So um, churches now, quite a good option for them is to have a sandblasted glass door or sandblasted windows. I've got a job coming up um, where I can show you that. Um, and this is my big kiln. Um, which is the one I generally use. Um, this is the controller. These are my recipes. Um, I think that's it really. <laughs>